I wanted to make a logic controlled elevator circuit just for fun, but the cost of the relays and the, the idea of troubleshooting just kind of put me off. So I found this uh, program called Logisim and what I did is I created a logic only uh, elevator control system. Uh, this elevator, there's only one car and there were four floors in the building. Uh, and this is the, the overview of the, the different modules I set up. Uh, so at the upper left is the call logic module and the inputs to that are the the call buttons on each floor. There's just one button calls for the elevator, uh, one through four. And then in the elevator car, there are the floor select buttons, one through four. Uh, reset is just for the simulation here. And then down below is the position logic module. Uh, the inputs to that are what I call the floor approach switches. And what these are, as, as, as the elevator is getting near a uh, floor that's been called to stop at, this, these are little trip switches that will basically tell the motor to slow down. Uh, now this circuit has one for each floor, and I realize I don't need that. They could all be in series uh, because the elevator knows where it's at. So if it, if it gets an approach switch, it's going to know to slow down regardless. But here there are four different approach switches. And, and these would be above and below each floor. And those would be in series also. Uh, uh, and then here we have the car position indicators. These could be lights over the doors to the elevator, inside and out. Uh, the approach is just a signal that these switches have been tripped. Up here, uh, there's a call active signal. I'll get into these. They come from uh, the call logic module. All these modules, the right side is outputs and the left side is inputs. And I think that's universal here. Uh, so we'll get to that. The direction decode uh, tells them the lift motor which way to go. And that is triggered by uh, a signal called call above or call below that comes from the logic module. Uh, direction indicator, uh, if it's going up, it's lit, it's red. And what else? The motor door logic, uh, we have all these inputs from the other modules. Then the outputs are motor up and motor down. And I did that deliberately with two separate signals. Uh, not sure why at the moment, but I think it was needed. And then here's a, a command slow enable, which tells the motors to slow down. And that lights up this uh, signal here, this output. These are all outputs. Uh, command door open. Uh, this is a signal that says we've arrived at a floor or somebody on that floor has already has pushed a button where the elevator is al already at. Uh, when this whole system is idle, the doors are closed on the elevator. When command door open is triggered, that comes down to uh, um, I created a door simulator circuit just for the simulation. Basically, it says open the door and then the command door open goes away. The door opens and you'll see the door open status light here. And then the door will eventually close on its own timer and that will go away. What did we miss? Okay. Uh, the two simulators I'll get into later, they have uh, some timers and things in them that yeah, I really wouldn't want anything like that in my uh, actual circuit. But since these two are simulators, I figured I could cheat a little. But all the other modules only have logic gates in them, and some are set up as uh, set, reset, flip-flops. So let's go to the, the call logic module next. Okay, let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh, 
I call it button latches, but it's really called logic. So all of our inputs are on the left, and all of our outputs are on the right. These are uh, set reset latches, and I had to simulate them also because this Logisim doesn't, it seems to think it's going to oscillate. And that might be true in reality, I don't know. But I'm assuming they won't oscillate in this circuit. So the buttons are similar for each floor. There's a, a master reset here, which is just part of the simulation. And then the door done. Well, let's start at the top. Call one is the uh, call button on each floor. Calls for the elevator. That'll latch the, uh, the latch. Uh, or if you're in the elevator and you press a floor select button, that will latch the latch also for that floor. Then the position uh, is where the elevator is actually located. And I'll show you this in another module, but the uh, the position latches until the car reaches another floor. So there's always a position one, two, three, or four that's set logic high. Uh, and those latch somewhere else. So anyway, the idea of this uh, module here is to develop the output signals. One says that the call is active. We'll see how that's used later. Uh, the at stop signal, that says that the elevator is stopped at a floor that's been selected to stop at. The call above and call below, they basically take the position of the car and if there are any calls above it, it goes high. And if there are any calls below, it goes this goes high. And both of these can be high at the same time. Uh, yeah, so the uh, back to this, the door done button. When the door simulator or the actual door circuit says that it's been opened and now closed, it'll trigger this signal and that'll reset the the floor select latch that the elevator car has stopped at. I, I'm not going to get into demonstrating all this. I would suggest you get Logisim and I'll make this uh, project available on the internet. I'll put it in a link to the video. And you can uh, you get down here to this poke tool and you can click on these and force them to logic high, logic low, and you can see how it works, just the module. That's pretty cool. And um, we will do that on the front, uh, you know, the master screen later. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. The position logic module, let's have a look at that. Uh, we talked about the inputs. I missed one. Uh, the position simulator just simulates where the car is, which floor it's on, and it takes up and down motor signals. So the, those floor position inputs go to this module, and the approach buttons go to this module, which I mentioned are switches uh, near the stopping positions of the elevator. And they basically trip to slow the, the car down when it's approaching a selected floor. Let's uh, see if we can get into this. Uh, okay. The car position latches. Uh, there's one switch at each floor that will latch this relay. Uh, The car position latches, there's one for each floor. Uh, they're connected to a, a mechanical switch. When the car reaches the floor and stops, it triggers this input, one of the four floors. Only one of these can be latched at a time, obviously, because <laughs> the car can only be in one place at a time. Uh, so that's fairly simple. They're just latches. The, the approach buttons we talked about, basically they're all tied together here or together. So when the elevator approaches a floor from either direction, it'll trip one of these. And the circuit downstream doesn't really care because it knows where the elevator is. And all this 
really does is tell the motor to slow down and it switches to a different circuit. I don't show the motor drive circuit here since I don't really have a motor, uh, but we do simulate it. The direction decode module, uh, I designed it so if, if the elevator car is moving in an upward direction and there are calls above, it continues all the way up until it reaches the last call for the elevator. And the same for the down. If, if, there, if it's coming down a third floor and stops and there's a call on the first, it continues. Even if there's a call on another floor for the dif opposite direction. Uh, the reason I did this is so the, the elevator car is just not hopping around from floor to floor without not ever reaching, say, the ground floor. Uh, this might not really happen that often, but I, it was one of those things that needed to be taken care of. And I don't remember, I think I had to relearn car now maps to get this to do what I want. And it may be much simpler, I don't know, but it's the best I could do. We'll see this operate later. The motor and door logic took a little bit of doing. Uh, I'll demonstrate it here. Again, we have our inputs on the left. Uh, there's a direction signal from the other module. And those pass through to the motor up, motor down. And those go to the motor controller, which is not really shown here. Uh, then the approach button, which tells it to slow down. It pretty much passes straight through. And that is reset when the uh, the car is at its stop at a floor that's been selected. Makes sense. Door status follows the uh, the door simulator. If it is zero, the door is closed, and that's the idle state for the door. If it's uh, high, the door is open, and of course we get the signal out: door open. And that prevents movement of the uh, the motors for one thing, and when especially when it yeah, basically that's a lockout for the motor uh, to prevent any other movement. Uh, and then uh, there's a, the latch here, and when the door simulator is done, that feeds the door status symbol. That will go to zero, and uh, basically trigger the door done signal which you know resets the call button for the floor and basically shuts the circuit down if you when we do the full demo you'll see that I'll show the door simulator briefly basically the action we want is uh, like it says one pulse triggers the operation there's a, a delay between open and closed states while the door is moving so there's a mechanical movement here. Uh, so that's so what I'm going to do. I'll, I'm going to quickly pulse this up and down. There's a clock for a simulator. You watch uh, the open will come on after a short period, and then it'll close by itself after a short period. And the door status will indicate that. Here you got one, zero. Door opens. Door is open. People get in, and then it goes to closed. Um, basically, this the shift register creates delays. Uh, that's about all I remember of this. The car position simulator. Uh, two inputs on the left. Motor up, motor down. A uh, bunch of logic here. I think I look, needed a car now map to figure this out. I Sorry, I don't have that to show now. Uh, it's a flip-flop and a uh, decoder. Uh, I forget now exactly what it is. You have to play with this if you want to understand it more deeply. I honestly don't remember now the, the details. But as long as the motor up is 1, this number will increase 1 to 4. Motor down, it'll go the other way. And you cannot have both set at the same time and the, the driving logic for this prevents that. For those not familiar with Logisim, I'll try to do a real quick 
rundown on how to uh, run the simulation. In this case, uh, I've already run it, so I'll go to File, uh, Open Recent, and wherever you put it, you know, you'll have to go find the simulation you downloaded. So this is the starting screen. This is a, an error condition I don't quite understand, but you, you can force your way through it. Uh, we go up to Simulate, Reset Simulation, and then Simulate again, and we want to make sure it's enabled. And when we want to turn on the ticks, those are the clock generators. Uh, let's look at the tick frequency that matters. 16 hertz, you want to set that. Uh, that's all you need. Uh, then we go down to base, the folder says base. Click the poke tool, little finger, and uh, we're ready to go. Uh, if you hit the reset button, and there's our car at the first floor. And remember, you can select the fourth floor. Red lights are on. If any of these lines turn red, there's some kind of error condition. Uh, I'm not. I don't know where that comes from. But generally, once you're up and running, you're good. Uh, probably the more buttons on the left you click, the more likely you might cause trouble. Well, that's the best I can do. It's uh, I did this in August. So I don't remember a lot of the details of it. So thanks for watching.